Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys some tips on how you can find your art style. Whilst I'm talking about that, I'm going to be painting this owl and if you are interested in getting prints of this, then they are available over on my Etsy store at kirstypartridgeart.etsy.com and also if you want to watch a real-time version of this, which is the full real-time with voiceover, then I have got that available over on my Patreon and I'll leave a link at the top of the description to that if you want to check that out. Also, for anyone interested in the materials that I'm using, they're all listed in the description as well. Anyway, let's get on to today's art topic. So what I'm talking about is how you can find your art style and whether an art style is really important and stuff like that. So firstly, if you're trying to find your art style, I really recommend experimenting. So trying out different styles, trying out different mediums, because you might come across something that you haven't thought of or tried before and you might really, really enjoy it. So in a way, it's really good to get out of your comfort zone and branch into other areas. So for example, if you're a beginner and you're just used to trying out graphite or drawings, then you might want to try out some painting or try out some different styles that you haven't tried before. So with me, I really like realism, but I like to try out some other things as well because you never know what you're going to really enjoy and you might find something new that you love even more than what you used to do. And this will help you kind of branch out and learn other mediums and this will help you learn new techniques and develop yourself and your skills as an artist. So another great way to kind of enhance and develop your art style is to really look at other artists. So on your social media, look at the people that you like to follow, the people you look up to and the types of drawings that you're really kind of drawn to, the art that you like, the art that you'd want to display in your house or in your room and see what you're naturally drawn to. And this can really give you an insight into what kind of artwork you want to create. So see if there's any patterns, any real styles that pop out that you'd really love and if you like that then you could try creating stuff that is similar to that obviously you don't want to copy your favorite artists that is completely different than being inspired by them but being inspired by them looking at the techniques they use the way they apply the paint or the pencils or what sort of subject matters they use their composition stuff like that their color choices this is something that can help you create your own pieces of work that is really original and unique to yourself Another thing that you need to bear in mind is that your art style is going to be constantly changing. So at no point is your art style just going to remain the same. As you grow as an artist, your art style will develop and your art will look slightly different over time. And this can be because your techniques are improving, you're developing your skills more, or just because you have different interests and your style and what you're interested in is changing. So you might find different subject matters more interesting as you grow up than you did when you were younger and so you need to remember that your art style is going to be changing and evolving with you and this might even be the case where you don't even realize that your st like style is changing you might not even realize that you have a style a lot of artists can't really see their sort of unique style but other people would be able to tell straight away that that piece of artwork is from that artist so even if you don't think you have an art style you might actually really do have one but you just don't really notice it so what I'd really say is don't worry straight away if you're young, don't worry about finding this art style. As you develop your skills, your art style will naturally progress, you'll build up an art style, you'll kind of develop a way that you like to do things or certain subject matters that you're interested in. So don't fret about it too much, it will develop over time and as you grow as an artist. So therefore, I think it's really important just to draw what you love, what inspires you, look at your artists that you enjoy, see what they're doing and what you're kind of drawn to in their work and just really create what you love. And over time, you will create that natural art style. It's really not something that you should actively be worrying about and trying to force. You can't really force an art style upon yourself. It's just something that you'll naturally do. Obviously, you can kind of help sway which kind of mediums you enjoy, what subject matter you like to create and how you like to apply the pencils or paint but again once you create loads and loads of different pieces of artwork you'll start to see similarities and patterns kind of emerging of what is similar what kind of makes all of those paintings look like your pieces of artwork 
And over time, people will be able to kind of tell that those pieces of artwork were from that one artist because you'll just naturally kind of have a different way to do things than other people. So really make sure that you're not worrying about it that much. And also remember that you don't have to stick to one art style. There's no rule that you can only do one medium, one art style. So for me, I like to do lots of different styles, lots of different mediums. So I like to use graphite and charcoal. I love using colored pencils, watercolors, markers. I really like to switch it up and keep it kind of interesting. I like to switch between mediums so I'm not just doing the same thing over and over again, especially if I'm doing really long colored pencil pieces that take about 50 hours. I like to then do something that's a bit quicker between them just to make it a bit more kind of interesting so I don't get bored. And so it's not just repetitive. And again, I like to use different subject matters. I like to do portraits, I like to do animals, I like to do obviously realism or even cartoons and I like to do like this sort of thing. It's more kind of stylistic with the watercolour, it's not super realistic. Obviously it's got realistic elements to it but it's much more free and creative. So I like to do lots of different things like here I'm using pens so I like to use a lot of mixed media as well. I never just use one art style and I'm not too worried about just using one art style. You can have one art style that you do more often so I am probably do realism more than I do this kind of work but that doesn't mean that you can't do any other art style, you have to stick to your one style that you like. If you want to stick to just one art style then that's completely okay but don't feel like you have to limit yourself to that one art style, especially if you are interested in doing lots of different mediums and if you enjoy and are inspired by lots of different things. Don't limit yourself and don't feel like you have to limit yourself. So yeah, that is my advice for how to find your art style. Really, it's not like you should have to go out and find it, but you can obviously kind of make it a quicker transition by looking at lots of artists, by looking at what inspires you. I love looking at social media and seeing what my favourite artists are doing. It really inspires me and it also just motivates you to want to paint and draw if you see pieces that you really, really enjoy. It makes you want to create. So definitely look on social media, look at your other artists that influence you. Also, just try not to worry about it too much, especially if you're young. You know, that will develop over time, especially as you have more experience and you try and paint lots of different things. It will definitely evolve as you evolve as an artist. Anyway, so now I just want to talk a bit more about this piece that I'm creating. So obviously I use watercolours to start with and I use the Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolours. And so I just use lots of different colours. I kind of planned out the colours I wanted to use a bit, but not really where I was going to place the colours. So I knew I wanted to do a lot of like yellow, purple and some blues and pinks. But I didn't really know that I was going to do a background, but I decided to. And I didn't know exactly where I was going to place all of the colours. So I used a lot of the sort of wet on wet method, especially for the background. I just sort of did a light wash of the colour and then dropped some darker colours in certain areas. And I think the wet and wet method gives a really nice sort of out of focus look and it Obviously the lines aren't really, really crisp because all of the different colours slowly bleed into each other, which I really, really like. So once I let that dry, I then went in with this black sort of fine liner and also the white gouache just to give a more illustrative sort of look. I like to add some different thicknesses of the black lines around, so I use different nibs of the fine liners to get the different varieties and thicknesses of the lines and I like to use the white gouache by the Winsor & Newton as well just to create some more bright highlights. So what I'm doing now is I'm going in with some Faber-Castell polychromos and I like to do this to kind of add more detail to find certain areas but also just to hype up the saturation on certain areas. So like you can see now I'm hyping up the saturation on the yellows, the pinks, the oranges just to make it really pop and look really saturated. And I'm doing this with this really sharp pencil. I like using the polychromos because of the fact that you don't get a really grainy look and you can sharpen them to a really sharp point and they maintain that point really, really well. 
but now I'm just kind of fixing up the details and tweaking things. I like to add different colours over the really black areas so it doesn't look so flat. So I added some of the blues and purples over the top of the really dark markings. I did use a reference photo when I did this just to help with the anatomy of the owl. Even though I didn't want it to look really realistic, I still wanted the shadows, highlights and all the markings and main features of the owl to look accurate. So yeah, I do recommend using a reference photo even if you don't want to do something super realistically. I'm adding some green and blue to the background as well. And you can just see it looks so much more vibrant now. So like I said, I do have this available as a print in the 8x10 inches 11 by 14 and 12 by 16 on my Etsy store and I will leave a link to that in the description and a card up above as well if you want to check that out. I've got lots of different animals in this style over on my Etsy store as well. But anyway guys that's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed these little tips on how to find your art style. If you want some real time tutorials on these other free animals as well as the owl then again they are on my Patreon in real time. So you can get up to 15 real time tutorials for just $5 a month over on there. If you're new to my channel and you like these tutorials, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified on my new videos. But that's it for today and I will see you next time. Bye everyone.